Well, hello, my friends and fans. Welcome to Paula's Kitchen and more. We have a very special episode today. And if any of you are children of the 60s, ever watched Rocky and Bullwinkle, you may remember Mr. Peabody and Sherman and the Wayback Machine. Well, you know what? We're going to the Wayback Machine today and we're gonna pull up a Paula's Kitchen that we filmed right after we first moved into this house. But it was such a fun endeavor that we want to present it to you on this channel in case you missed it. It's a step back to the 60s and we're gonna do two recipes that are classics from the 60s and Dale's gonna sing two songs that are classics from the early 60s as well. I love doing vintage stuff like this. We actually did this twice, so later on we'll show you the second one as well. But I hope, hope, hope you enjoy this little trip back in time with some vintage 60s cool stuff in Paula's Kitchen and more. Hello everybody, welcome to Paula's Retro Kitchen 1960s edition. First of all, check out the dress and the apron. We went all out for this one. I even dug out some pearls to wear for you. <laughs> all right, today we're gonna have such a good time. You don't wanna miss a minute. We are making two recipes from the early 1960s and we are going to present two songs from the 1960s, courtesy of Mr. Dale McKenzie. You always want to hear him sing. You're going to hear him sing today. All right. First up for our main course, we're going to pull out this vintage Better Homes and Gardens cookbook published in 1962. I think I got it from my mother-in-law when I got married. Um, it is Swedish meatballs, and we're going to make it exactly like the cookbook tells us to. And then our dessert is going to come out of a Betty Crocker cookbook. That's going to be a pineapple upside down cake a little bit later on in between the music. So let's talk ingredients for our meatballs. It calls for three kinds of ground meat. We have ground beef, ground veal, and ground pork. And we're going to add that to some soft breadcrumbs and some light cream. We've got some seasonings, onion, egg, and parsley going into our meatballs. And then once they're browned up, we're going to make a gravy using some beef broth concentrate, some uh, coffee, believe it or not, for flavoring, and a little bit of flour for thickening. I'm really excited about this recipe. I haven't made Swedish meatballs ever, and I'm certainly not familiar with this recipe, so let's discover it together. Here we are. We are going to get started on the Swedish meatballs. First of all, let me tell you about the meat proportions. All of the beef, veal, and pork that I bought were in one pound packages. So on the beef, I need three quarters of a pound. On the veal, I need a half a pound, and on the pork, I need a quarter of a pound. So I just use my little kitchen scale to make sure that I have those uh, proportions correct. Just FYI, the veal I was able to find in the frozen food section in the grocery store, the beef and pork were of course available fresh. So I was glad about that. So set that aside for a sec. I need to soak my breadcrumbs now. These are one and a half cups of fresh crumbs, soft crumbs they call them in the recipe. And soft crumbs are basically meaning you actually use fresh bread to do that. And I think I've told you before on Paula's Kitchen, I tend to use hamburger buns for those, and then I just use my grater, and they come out really nice. So what I need to do is I need some light cream that I picked up at the grocery store. I need a cup of that, and I'm going to soak the crumbs for about five minutes. So, all right, one cup of the light cream. Meanwhile, while we do that, we have to just brown for a few minutes a half a cup of onion in a tablespoon of butter. So we're going to get that going as well. This, of course, is your binder in meatballs. You always put a binder in meatballs. All right, I'm just going to set that aside for five minutes. Look at my clock. Okay. And I've got a tablespoon of butter in my little saucepan here. I'm just going to turn this on real quick. 
and melt the butter and I have uh, just diced half a cup of onion. So I figure by the time I have my onions cooked slightly, my, uh, my five minutes should be up. Drop those in. Wow, that is a strong onion today. My cameraman has already made comments about the onion smell here in the kitchen and we haven't even done anything yet. <laughs> My five minutes has gone by and just as I thought, my onions have sweated and softened. I'll just show you those in the overhead camera. So those are ready to roll. And my breadcrumbs and cream have mushed together. So we are actually gonna use the mixer on this. Uh, so that's an unusual thing. The other thing they said is for the meats, they said to have the butcher grind them together, of course, in this world, even if it wasn't for the crazy world we live in right now, we would never have a butcher do that. So I am going to mush them together myself, <laughs> just with my hands, took my rings off. So I'm just gonna mush them together before I add the other ingredients. And as we go, I will tell you what the herbs and spices are. Anyway, all right, that's enough on the hand mixing, I think. Let me wash my hands, I'll be right back. Let's continue. I'm going to put my onions in first, my softened sweated onions. Um, I'm going to add my breadcrumbs. Alrighty, and then one egg. It didn't say to beat it a little bit, but I did just to make it go in a little better. Now let's talk about the seasonings. First of all, I'm going to need one quarter cup of fresh parsley. And then I think this is one and a half teaspoons of salt. Yes. So that goes in. Then I need one quarter teaspoon of ginger, a dash of nutmeg, and then I need a dash of black pepper as well. So I ground up a little bit of pepper ahead of time and I'm just gonna grab that same amount out of my little cup of pepper. I am ready to turn my mixer on and make a nice homogeneous mixture out of this meatball mess, but I don't need you to listen to the mixer. Nobody wants to hear that. I'll tell you what, Dale has such a sad saga to tell you. Take a look, take a listen. I dare you not to cry. Here's my story, it's sad but true. And all about a girl that I once knew. She took my love and ran around. With every single guy in town. Hey, hey, oh, hey, 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 oh, hey, 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 oh, hey, 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 Should've known it from the very start Girls gonna leave me with a broken heart now Listen people what I'm telling you You gotta keep away from a run around Sue You know I, I miss her lips and the smile on her face Touch of her hand and this girl's warm embrace If you don't wanna cry like I do You gotta keep away from a run around Sue I said whoa, whoa, whoa Now people let me put you wise A Sue goes out with all the other guys Now the moral of the story from a guy who knows I fell in love and my love still grows Ask any fool that she ever knew the same I keep away from a run around Sue You gotta keep, keep away from this girl I know, I know, I know what you'll do 
Keep Bye. away from Sue. Ah. Uh. She likes to travel around, yeah. She'll love you, then she'll put you down. Now, people, let me put you wise. A Sue goes out with all the other guys. Now, the moral of the story from a guy who knows. I fell in love and my love still grows. Ask any fool that she ever knew. They'll say, I keep away from a run around Sue. You gotta keep, keep away from that girl. I know, I know what you'll do. Keep away from Sue. I mixed the meat and flavorings at medium speed for a total of five minutes on the mixer. Now we're finally ready to make meatballs. I've laid out some wax paper on my work surface and wet my hands with cold water. Our aim is to roll meatballs that are about an inch and a half in diameter. I definitely recommend using wet hands. I tried it with dry off camera and the mixture is so sticky it didn't work at all. You could also chill it before handling. Okay, the meatballs are standing by, so I'm ready to melt two tablespoons of butter in my big frying pan. When that's melted, I drop in about half the meatballs to brown lightly. As the recipe instructs, I shook the pan several times during cooking to move them around. It took about 10 minutes to brown them. Ladies and gentlemen, a little bit of time has gone by. I actually made two pans full of the Swedish meatballs. And in fact, cameraman Dale came around and actually helped me make some of the meatballs. All right, everything has been pulled out and put onto a plate. And now I've just got my drippings in the pan. I am going to add two tablespoons of flour to those drippings and stir that. Pick up all that goodness from the butter and whatever drippings we had from our meats. And then I'm going to add three quarter cup of this concentrated beef broth that I purchased at the store. Three quarter cup and then I'm going to make up a full cup with just some water. So let me do that. All right, stir that in. And then the piece de resistance I need to go grab, actually out of the freezer, just a little bit of Folgers. And that's it. Alrighty, I just need to stir this until the gravy thickens a little bit and then we're going to put our meatballs back in. I'm going to grab a lid and we are going to cook this for about 30 minutes, low and slow. And that will be ready to serve. Drop these in. Look how many meatballs that recipe made. It's really a lot. And I could see why folks were keen to use it for par cocktail parties and, and get togethers because these would feed a crowd. This is a lot of meatballs. All right, I'm just going to cover these up with some of the gravy here, get them all immersed and I'm going to grab a lid. Moving on to recipe number two, now that we have our Swedish meatballs underway, we're going to make dessert. And this one is coming from the Betty Crocker Picture Cookbook circa 1961. It was actually sent to us by one of our patrons in Canada, and it's the classic pineapple upside down cake. So what's going to end up on the bottom is going to be pineapple slices, of course, some cherries, some pecans in butter and brown sugar, and then the cake batter is your typical flour, sugar, baking powder, salt, and shortening. Oh, and an egg. So we are gonna make this in an eight by eight square pan, so it's not gonna be a great big pineapple upside down cake, but it's going to be very pretty because of course we're gonna arrange all those fruits and nuts in the bottom. Let's get going. I changed quarters. The Swedish meatballs are coming along. They look so delicious and they smell amazing. I don't know if I mentioned, I'm gonna serve them over some buttered egg noodles, another staple of the 60s. Dale and I both grew up in the 60s, so these are really reminiscent of things we ate when we were kids. Alrighty, so 
The pineapple upside down cake, as I said, was suggested by one of our patrons and I certainly have been eating this my whole life. So first off, I am going to take my pineapple slices and I'm going to just put them on a paper towel to drain them slightly before I use them. I don't know how many I'm gonna need, but let me just drain some of that juice off. All right, now, Normally you would use maraschino cherries. I could not find them. We have a great big huge grocery store where we live, but I couldn't find them. So I just got some tart cherries. So let me also just set those on the paper towel to drain just some of the water off of them for a little bit. All right, folks, bottom layer. And you don't even need to grease your pan because the bottom layer is going to be one third of a cup of butter which I just melted in the microwave because that's about the easiest way to do it. So I'll pour my butter in. And then next step is one half cup of firmly packed brown sugar. And we're gonna crumble that in among the butter. So like so. All right, now here's where we get to the design part of things. So let's see what we can do in our eight by eight pan. I'm gonna start with my pineapple slices. Throw in a couple cherries in the center there. And you get the idea. And then I'm gonna use my pecans to fill in. The cake batter is quite simple in terms of ingredients and also preparation. What I've done so far is I've taken one and a third cups of just simple all-purpose flour and I've measured it in a bowl. And then I also am going to throw in one cup of sugar into that bowl. And then two teaspoons of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt. Let me make sure I'm saying that right. Yes, that's correct. And those are my dry ingredients for the cake. So first thing I'm gonna do is just stir those together gently before we move on with the wets. So that is just about ready to roll there. Now, wet ingredients, it calls for one third cup of shortening. And again, we're making these recipes exactly like we would have in the 60s. I'm not sure if in 2021 I would use shortening in a cake. I would likely use butter, but we're doing it the way the cookbook says. So shortening it is. Crisco, one third cup. So I'm gonna to toss that in. Two thirds cup of milk, which I've measured out here. And one teaspoon of vanilla. <laughs> There's my teaspoon of vanilla. Now, next up is the dreaded mixer, but I'm not gonna subject you to that. I'm gonna turn the camera around and let's see if we can entice Dale to sing another beautiful song made famous by Ben E. King back in 1961. There is a rose in Spanish Harlem A rare rose up in Spanish Harlem It is a special one that never sees the sun And only comes out when the moon is on the run And all the stars are gleaming I'm going to pick that rose and watch her as she grows in my garden. There is a rose in Spanish Harlem, a rare rose up in Spanish Harlem. as black as coal that look down in my soul and start a fire there and then I lose control I have to beg 
your pardon I'm going to pick that rose And watch her as she grows In my garden As black as coal That look down in my soul And start a fire there And then I lose control I have to beg your pardon I'm gonna pick that rose And watch her as she grows In my garden I'm gonna pick that rose and watch her as she grows in my garden. La 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 All right, back to it. It was two minutes of beating the dry ingredients, the wet ingredients, minus the egg. I added the egg and it was two minutes more and we are ready now to pour this over top of the cake. Or I should say over top of our arrangement of fruits and nuts. <laughs> Let me pour this towards you so you could see it. You want to be gentle with this so you don't dislodge anything. This is really a lovely batter. All right. Spread that gently flat and I have preheated my oven to 350 so this is going to go in for 40 to 50 minutes. That's a long spread. I'll start checking it at 40. And meanwhile, I'm going to make my accompaniment for dinner because those meatballs have been on the stove for 30 minutes and they are done. All right, next up, I'm throwing this in the oven. This is another one of those dinners that we have earned, did we not? <laughs> Give me a fist bump, Mr. Dale. This was another all-day affair. <laughs> and that doesn't count all the time we put into recording the two songs, which we actually recorded on Memorial Weekend. Yeah, yeah, and there's two more to, there's two more to go. Uh, I hope you like them. <laughs> How could you not like them? They're wonderful. <laughs> well, we have Swedish meatballs here, and I'm starving. He is, poor guy. And let me just mention, jello molds, as I said, are very iconic for the 60s. So I made one that I probably would never have made if I wasn't doing this cooking show. It's called the Springtime Calico Mold. It's made with lime jello, cheddar <laughs> cheese, radishes, cucumbers. Oh, it's very unique and unusual. It is, it's not a dessert Well, gelatin, I guess I'm so going to cut a little bit of that I off then and put that on my plate. Just to, no, look at that. It is full of stuff. <laughs> it's full of stuff. <laughs> and of course, as you could see in the big reveal, the pineapple upside down cake looks great. So we'll be finishing our meal with that. And in true Mad Men fashion, we have to have a little highball. And this is Hendrix. Oh, I didn't even, I thought and it was water. <laughs> fever tree tonic. Oh. Isn't that refreshing after the day we've had? All right, Mr. All right. Dale, I'm sorry, you earned it. Please but I have got to sample give your this a shot. Swedish meatballs. 
And I'm gonna eat one till you do. Tell me what you think. Wow, are those tender. Oh, that gravy or saucer. It's gravy. Gravy. Yeah. Wow, is that good. Let me try one. It's been oh. driving me nuts all day. Oh, that is really, really good. Classic Swedish meatball flair. Ikea could not have done this better. Are they good? Oh, yeah. They're, they're really, really good. good. <laughs> they are really wow. good. And uh, buttered noodles is just a perfect accompaniment because the gravy is so rich and delicious. Maybe it's that little hint of coffee, huh? I got, yeah. You know what? Mm. I got to try another one of those and just see if I can taste that. Wow. And we'll try with a little calico mold as well. Yeah, I'm true. I made this yesterday. I'll put the recipe in the description box in case you want to try it. But because it was a jello mold, I thought it would be easier to it just make it. It is full of stuff. Mm. Is it not? <laughs> it's super summery fresh, isn't it? It is. It's actually really good. Mm. I've never had jello uh, um, with vegetables well, in it. Uh, yeah, That's or cheese. Mm. Never had it with cheese. I'm a fan. It's good. Wow. Very I don't know good. if it was worth all the work and the stopped up sink and whatnot, but I'll tell you what, I'm with Dale. I am hungry. <laughs> As you can see, we <laughs> devoured those meatballs. Not only that, Dale went around to the stove and ate some more out of the pan. <laughs> I'll tell you, that sauce is amazing. It is. I've never made that before, but boy, that was rich, flavorful. We can't even wait for leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> so we are on to the dessert part of the uh, dinner. We sure are. It is going to be warm pineapple upside down cake. So let me just cut into this. Just a small one. I know. We're just sampling. I'm going to give it a, I'm going to go in for it. Wait a minute. Oh, sorry. What? Oh. Invented in 1948, <laughs> distributed across the country in 1954, so your home in the 1960s would have had some Ready Whip. And it says you are to serve the cake with Ready Whip. Really? Or with whipped cream. This is real cream, so it's the closest to Now, my, get. my mother used to make her own whipped cream. Oh, yeah, from scratch? Yeah. But this is actually made with real cream, so it's a very cool, available oh, in the 60s. Substitute. Uh-oh. I'll tell you what. This is really groovy, man. <laughs> well, that's a little later in the 60s. I'm oh. not sure it was groovy in 1961. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to do flower power later on, huh? <laughs> mm. I'll show you a picture of me with long hair. Yeah. That would fit right in with it this would. particular uh, topic, wouldn't it? That is terrific. That is Paula's Retro kitchen early 60s edition with music yeah i hope you like this one we really we really worked hard on this we to did. try to try to make this real good and yeah there's a lot of back story issues especially with the songs and the rights and all that stuff that you have to deal with so uh i, I hope you really enjoyed this and if you did i think we're going to try to do this more often all right. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button. Anything else, Paul? Oh, I think we've done the gamut today. We've done food and music out of the kitchen. And what else could you ask for? Not, 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 not from me, anything. <laughs> we will see you soon. Thanks for hanging out with us in Paula's Kitchen. Hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye everybody. Bye.